Welcome to Room Now, Hard Decisions in Rheumatoid Arthritis. My name is Dr. Eric Dine from Atlantic Health in Summit, New Jersey. How do you use ultrasound in the care of patients with rheumatoid arthritis? Uh, for a lot of physicians, including myself, you're often having to justify it to, to um, show to insurances or to employers uh, why the use of it is beneficial to have a machine, to use it yourself and not send those patients to radiology and to bill for it. Sometimes insurances will point to randomized com controlled trials like TASER and ARDIC that did not show an improved clinical outcome with conventional treat-to-target um, approaches. Um, and these studies make sense. And I agree that ultrasound is not necessarily um, uh, helpful in all RA patients for routine follow-up in all patients, that, um, uh, that it's, first of all, not a practical use in, in the clinic setting, uh, but also it, it isn't beneficial compared to that conventional T2T approach um, in, in doing it for all patients. We know that some patients will be in clinical remission and can still have some subclinical inflammatory changes on, on a Doppler signal on an ultrasound, uh, and that I would not necessarily over-treat these patients that by all of our disease activity markers show that they're doing well. Um, that said, it is a very useful modality in the right patients. Uh, in these hard decisions in RA, the ultrasound can be helpful when that decision is not clear. There are multiple studies that demonstrate the value of looking for the power Doppler signal, which predicts erosive damage uh, and can be shown to respond to DMAR treatment and, and help signify a, 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 a medication response. This is particularly helpful for the patients that have a discordance uh, between the physician global and the patient global, um, or when you see them, they, they may have inflammatory arthralgias of MCP, PIP, wrist pain, but, um, you know, and morning stiffness, but you don't see objective synovitis. And so what do you do with this patient population group? Uh, I ran a poll on the app formerly known as Twitter uh, to ask what, what rheumatologists would do in, in these patients with a discordance. Uh, three quarters of respondents would favor the use of musculoskeletal ultrasound in this patient group. The remaining votes were pretty much evenly split between MRI, hand, hand and wrist, uh, and continuing to observe until you see clinical um, synovitis. Um, less people uh, in, the, in the Twitter format uh, went for a vector test, but um, in speaking with more community rheumatologists, I think it's, it's more um, popular there compared to what, what may be more academic on, on tw Twitter. Um, but ultimately there's all these different techniques that we can do to help us in these discordant cases, to break a tie when the, when the patient and the uh, and the exam do not necessarily align. Um, I, I find that musculoskeletal ultrasound is ideal in this situation. I think it, it's cheaper than doing an MRI. It's more accessible. You can do it at that time in the bed, it, in the bedside uh, and, and take a look. And you can look with the patient, engage the patient, show them what you're looking at. Um, and uh, particularly when done by the uh, treating rheumatologist, if they have a background in ultrasound, um, but if they have that clinical context to bring to that study. One else to use ultrasound. Uh, I find the cohort of seropositive arthralgias, particularly CCP positive patients without objective synovitis, this is helpful of these at-risk patients to be who might progress to uh, frank rheumatoid arthritis. Um, what to do with those patients, certainly it, it can help advise the patient to, upon their risk. Uh, and there's certainly ongoing discussion as to when exactly to start some of these at-risk patients with medications and what to use there. Other patient populations, it's helpful in, in the differential uh, building when, when you're not sure if it's rheumatoid arthritis versus other etiologies, uh, particularly looking for signs of crystalline arthritis um, or looking on ultrasound if there's erosive findings um, or other RA type findings uh, that can help confirm that diagnosis when you're not completely sure, um, or if a patient is not responding to treatment and, and you need to revisit that diagnosis. Um, it's helpful in patients with long-standing RA to help know is there pain from long-standing disease and damage or destruction, or is it from active disease activity? And though I, I haven't used it much myself in, in this patient population, there, there's growing evidence in using it for patients uh, before medication tapering or discontinuation. That as I said, patients can be in clinical remission and have Doppler signal, 
uh, and have other ultrasound findings. And, and I wouldn't advocate escalating therapy in those patients, but um, there's certainly data to support not de-escalating, that they may be more prone to having flares in that if you were to taper or withdrawal medication when they still have some Doppler activity. So all in all, musculoskeletal ultrasound is an excellent technology that should be available uh, for rheumatologists that have training and background in it. I think it's best when done by the rheumatologists themselves if they have that clinical background, uh, but it does require training. But it, it is a beneficial imaging modality in the appropriate RA patients that can appropriately guide the management in hard decision cases. Thank you very much and tune into Room Now for more coverage on hard decisions in RA.